Hey Lightweights, welcome back to some more Lore Lessons with Lightweight. Um, last, last lesson, <laughs> that's kind of hard to say, we talked about Odin and Freya's relationship a little bit more, um, focusing in mostly on Freya, how she lost her Valkyrie wings and her warrior spirit. Uh, we talked about how that played into the 2018 game, as well as predictions for Ragnarok and how that will tie in there. Um, and then we also talked about Brock and Sindri and how they created Mjolnir as well as, Levi as, well as the Leviathan Axe. Um, today we are going to continue talking about Odin um, with his obsession of Ragnarok. We're also going to talk about Magni and Modi. Last video we talked about Thor um, and Thor's mother specifically. So today we'll talk about his children. We're also going to talk about Tyr um, and the giants and how they left Midgard. And then we will end up with what Odin's end goal is, what he wants, which will be the end of our lore markers from the 2018 game. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what other predictions we can make, what other insights we might get into the Ragnarok game um, and some connections that I previously missed with the 2018 game. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button when you do so that you know when I post future videos. Um, and as always, just a disclaimer, I will try to give warning before I talk about anything related to Ragnarok or the trailers, um, but if you absolutely want to be 100% blind going into Ragnarok and I'm going to do my best, but these might not necessarily be the best videos for you to watch. So this is your warning not to be angry at me if I slip up and forget and talk about the trailers for Ragnarok without giving a warning. Okay, um, so let's start off with Odin and the desolation. One nasty side effect of Odin's corruption of the Valkyries is that there was no one left to sort the dead. Helheim overflowed. We found a marker with a prayer etched into the surface that called it Hell's Wild Hunt. Whoever wrote it was begging for Odin's help, not knowing it was his fault to begin with. I wonder if something, I wonder if it's something Odin intended all along, or if he just didn't care that everyone in Midgard suffered because of it. Um, and now it does have the lore marker with that prayer to Odin he was referring to. So it says, find here our sacrifice, mighty Allfather, and deliver Midgard from hell's wild hunt. Odin, wisest of all, whose breath gave life to Ask and Embla, first among our people, we beg your protection. Send forth your noble Valkyries and call the Deathless. Send forth your noble sons, Thor and Baldur, to shield us. Send forth dragons to consume the frigid horde. Save our souls that we may serve you evermore. Um, so some unintended side sidequences? <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Um, consequences slash side effects is sidequences, in case you're wondering. Um, some, some unintended side effects to Odin's lust for knowledge um, and his obsession with Ragnarok. Almost seeming like his obsession to stop Ragnarok could potentially be one of the things that leads to Ragnarok, so very interesting. Odin's obsession. The Jotnar prophecy of Ragnarok says that the giants will rise up to fight Odin and the Aesir, and that the battle will end up destroying everyone and everything. It was Groa who saw why Odin killed her. Who saw, oh, 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 hold on. It was Groa who saw and why Odin killed her. She was, unfortunately, the first of many giants to die because of the prophecy. And for some mad reason, Odin thinks he can stop the apocalypse if he can just destroy all of Jotunkind, a genocide of giants. It's why Odin had Brock and Sindri make Mjolnir in the first place, though he didn't tell them that at the time. He said he needed a gift for his eldest son, one worthy of the God of Thunder. They didn't know Odin would order Thor to go on a giant killing rampage with it. Mimir says Thor's a fat, drunk bully who already liked to hurt people, so killing giants was something he loved. It's really hard not to hate Thor based on everything I've ever heard about him. Father's helped me work on controlling my rage, even as he tries to do the same with his. But if I ever meet Thor, I don't know what I'll do. After all, he was Modi's father, and no one's ever gotten under my skin like him. I just hope things don't end the same way. I really am trying to be better. Um, so I have some 
thoughts on Magni and Modi in that fight with Atreus um, in the 2018 game, but I'm going to save them because the next section is on Magni and Modi specifically. I guess I should get into Magni and Modi, the sons of Thor. Although they're barely worth although they're barely worthy of mention as far as I'm concerned. Both were legendarily strong like their father, even as kids. When Hrungir, the stone giant, fell dead on top of Thor, trapping him, little Magni and Modi were the only ones strong enough to free him. Funny, everyone thinks Magni achieved this feat alone, and Mimir says that made Modi really bitter. Bitterness is like poison, Mother always said. Boy, was she right. Anyway, Magni and Modi's uncle Balder recruited the poor fools into his effort to track down the giant that Odin thought was loose in Midgard. We spotted them questioning Mimir at the mountain summit just before we cut Mimir loose from the tree. Well, part of him. <laughs> Later, Magni met father's axe near Thamur's, Thamur's magic chisel, and Modi met my knife in the mountain cavern. It sounds mean, but I don't think anybody misses them. Okay, so in the 2018 God of War, Magni and Modi. Um, obviously, we got into one giant fight with Magni and Modi, which resulted in Magni's death. And then we encounter Modi again right before Atreus turns into, or as he is kind of turning into a little shit. You know that segment of the game where you really just like want to send him home? Um, and he kills Modi. Now, obviously, Modi was egging him on, talking about his mother, knew exactly what to say to get under his skin, but Atreus' rage shone through there, and he killed him very mercilessly, even though Kratos told him not to because he was no threat. Um, and we see that kind of relationship that Magni and Modi have with Thor, because Modi mentions, comes back looking all bruised and battered and beaten, um, and says that basically his father's pissed at him for Magni's death, um, seemingly blaming him for the death. And you can kind of see that relationship. And I almost feel like it kind of reflects how Kratos and Atreus' relationship could be, um, but isn't because they're both actively working on having a tighter bond. But you can almost see Thor kind of being a mirror image to Kratos in some ways. Um, and I do think it's interesting to think about how if Kratos didn't want to be better, and Atreus didn't want to have a relationship with Kratos, um, how that relationship could turn out to be very similar to Thor, Magni, and Modi's. Um, so just kind of an interesting thing to think about. All right, so now let's shift gears and talk about Tyr. Um, obviously, we know Thor was hunting down the giants. Tyr, we do know, is a giant um, and was responsible for a lot of the cool things we saw in the 2018 game. We know in the 2018 game that he was loved by pretty much everybody except for the Aesir. Um, and he was responsible for hiding the way to get to Jotunheim and potentially saving the giants. Um, although we did see at the end of the 2018 game that there was some sort of giant massacre and some giant giants uh, were laying all across the landscape when we went to release our mother's ashes. So let's see if it gives us any more info for Tyr, and then I'll kind of give my thoughts um, on that and potentially connections to the trailers for Ragnarok. So this is Tyr, God of War. Mother's favorite god by far was Tyr. At first, it seemed strange to me since he was the Aesir God of War, but in her stories, all of Tyr's battles were really fought for peace. With a reputation for being fair and lawful, Tyr used his power and knowledge to stop wars instead of start them. Of course, Mimir actually knew Tyr and says people throughout the realms really did love him. Tyr believed that the mind, not might, was key to preventing war and chaos. I was glad to learn that good gods actually do exist, even if it's just once in a moon, as Mimir says. One reason Tyr was so open-minded was that he liked to travel and meet new people. Mimir says Tyr knew visiting other cultures would give him perspectives that staying in one place could not. You can see this clearly in the tapestries on the walls in Tyr's vault. While Odin always hoarded knowledge, guarding it jealously, Tyr was open and sharing with his learning and his wisdom, said Mimir. For this, mortals the world over adored Tyr, showing their love by bringing him gifts. And I do think that's really cool. Um, we do see in Tyr's vault, there's different kind of um, chambers of valuables that we come across. And one of those chambers 
um, has stuff from Greece. We do see Kratos on one of the vases, um, and that's kind of how Atreus starts to learn about his father's history. Um, we see that there are things from Egypt, and Mimir talks about the gods of Egypt briefly with Atreus. Uh, so that's kind of cool tying in all those other cultures into that segment specifically. All right, let's talk about Tyr and the Jotnar. Mimir also told us that Tyr felt responsible for what Odin did to the giants. Shortly after Mjolnir was forged, Tyr arranged a diplomatic meeting between Odin and the giant kings. Odin had convinced Tyr that the hammer was merely a defensive weapon, a deterrent, a way to broker peace from a position of strength. This was when the long war was young, said Mimir. Mimir, sorry. When victory was still a thing dreamed of and the Jotnar might have tipped the balance between Aesir and Vanir. Tyr knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, a superweapon in hands they did not trust, but they trusted Tyr. Tyr always believed the best in people, and taking Odin at his word in his desire for peace, he brought the Raven King to Jotunheim. Sadly, all Odin cared about by then was stealing the Jotnar prophecies. Things fell apart quickly. The giants were ready for Odin's trickery and exposed his true agenda to spy and steal their secret wisdom. With magics, they expelled Odin from their realm and cursed him never to return. Um, and I'm just going to go straight into the next part and then kind of give thoughts on these sections together. So that leads into the withdrawal from Midgard. Frustrated by his failure in the Jotunheim court, Odin turned his fury on the giants of Midgard. He directed Thor to unleash Mjolnir's might upon any giant he could find. Mimir says it was a terrible time. None could stand against the tide of slaughter that followed. For decades, the Midgard giants tried to fight back, but fell by the dozens. Finally, after 60 bloody years, all remaining Midgard giants, except Mother and the great serpent Jormungandr, retreated to Jotunheim and destroyed all the realm's bridges so the Aesir couldn't follow. With Tyr's help, the Jotunheim realm's travel tower on the Lake of Nine disappeared too. After that, no man or god set foot in Jotunheim again, until Father and I arrived. And then there is a scroll marker about the missing tower here as well. The search for any trace of the Jotunheim tower remains fruitless, not only in Midgard, but in all realms in which the tower once stood. There is now only a mystic echo of what was. Had it been destroyed by might, some remnant would remain. But this magical vestige suggests magical means. It must exist somewhere. Our horde of loyal spies continues to grow. I cannot doubt someday we will find it, wherever it may be hidden. The Raven Keeper. All right, so um, I'm going to be getting into Ragnarok territory. So if you are trying to be completely blind going in, please skip. Um, I didn't finish the section though, so hold on. <laughs> The sad thing is that Midgard was supposed to be different. Mother once told me there was a time when the races tried to make our realm a special place where everyone was welcome. We even found a wall in Jotunheim dedicated to it. Um, and then it goes into the lore marker titled The Dream of Midgard. Midgard was a dream of what could be if shared and collaborated. Jotnar, Aesir, Vanir, elves, dwarves, and mortals most of all. It was beautiful, but not everyone is capable of sharing. Some believe anything uncontrolled is savage and threatening, and so we were mocked and tricked and used and slaughtered. Odin and his tribe were barred from our realm, but it was not enough. The wrath of Thor and his terrible hammer have thinned our numbers in Midgard to the brink of ruin. There is no option but to withdraw while yet any live to do so. Another sad thing is that nobody really knows exactly what happened to Tyr. Mimir says Odin suspected Tyr of collaborating with the giants instead of helping steal their secrets. And he came to regard Tyr as a threat to his rule. Perhaps rightfully so, said Mimir. Did the Aesir kill him? Put him in some terrible prison? I'd give anything to meet Tyr. All right, now I'm gonna be talking about um, Ragnarok. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, so we do see in the trailers that they do meet up with Tyr, which is really exciting. He does seem to be a prisoner. Um, he's chained, and we do see a scene where Kratos breaks the chains off of Tyr. Um, so I'm going to assume the Aesir are responsible for that. I'll be curious to see how early on we meet Tyr. I 
do feel like most of the stuff we've seen in the trailers, if not all of it, is probably from very early game content. Um, because I feel like they've shown us kind of a lot of big story beats. Um, and I would be surprised if those large story beats weren't all at the very beginning. Um, beginning couple of hours, probably like the same amount of time that people who are allowed to do previews had, so the first five hours or so. Um, so hopefully we do meet him pretty early on because I am excited about that. I'm excited to finally learn what he did with the Jotunheim Tower. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and to see what our relationship with him is, what comes into play with him. Because um, in the trailers we do see him, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, and we don't know exactly what will be in store for us with him. We also see... I forget what her name is, but there is another giant that we do see in the trailers. Um, and I forget how I know she's a giant, but the actress came out and said who she is, or they came out and said who she is. I don't know, but we do see another giant as well. So clearly we are meeting up with some giants along the way, so they're not all dead, which at the end of 2018, it kind of made it seem like they were pretty much all dead. And I'm sure a majority of them are. There's probably just some out in hiding or maybe some imprisoned that we free when we free tier. Um, but I'm really excited to see how the giants come into it in Ragnarok. Um, I'm definitely excited that we know Tyr is in there. That would have been a really cool surprise, but also very exciting to think about and makes me excited to play the game and discover more about it. All right. Um, holding my book up for those who, who fast forwarded so they know I keep going. Um, final section for this video, what does Odin want? Before I start the next section on all the incredible giant lore I've learned from Mother, Mimir, and others, I have to mention one other thing about Odin and his crazy Ragnarok obsession and schemes. On one of our trips across Midgard, I asked Mimir if he knew why Baldur was chasing us. He said Baldur was probably tracking us for Odin, who knew we were trying to find Jotunheim just like Odin. But Baldur was already hunting us before Father and I even knew Jotunheim was our real destination. I asked Mimir how Odin could know we were looking for Jotunheim before we did. Mimir wasn't sure, but he thought it might be that Odin was a crazy collector of prophecies, because he's so afraid of the future that awaits him in Ragnarok. Later, I remembered Mimir's story about Odin's trip to Jotunheim with Tyr for that ill-fated meeting with the giant kings the one where the giants kicked Odin out of their realm forever. I wish I could have seen that. But if Odin made it to Jotunheim, I wonder if he ever spotted the mural on the wall, the one that shows the prophecy of Father and me on all the steps of our journey to Jotunheim. Maybe something in that mural got Odin all worked up? Maybe he also heard reports of a giant guardian left behind in Midgard. He has so many spies after all. Maybe Odin thought Father was the giant. When Baldur met Father, I'm sure he thought that. This guy's definitely, oh, this big guy's definitely the giant. But his father realized when he saw the wall mural, Balder didn't know that the giant he saw was actually mother. Of course, I'm part giant too, but there's no way anyone would be hunting for me. I am just a kid. All right. Um, so a lot of cool information about the giants in that section. Again, I know I said this last video, but it really feels like in Odin's quest to stop Ragnarok, he started the Tides Towards Ragnarok. Um, because I didn't really know much about the lore of Ragnarok, but it seems like Ragnarok is the death of Odin from the giants based off of what we read. Um, so in retaliation of that, Odin kills all the giants or attacks the giants to stop them from killing him. But if he had never done that, would the giants have ever attacked him? I don't know. So it's like the chicken and the egg type of thing, right? Did he lead to his own demise while trying to stop it. I just think that's fascinating. I think that's so cool. Um, and I'm really excited to read the tales of the giants. Um, so one of the tales I was going to read before I realized was Laffy the Just, and that is Atreus's mom, which I think is really cool. So we're definitely going to read that. Um, we definitely need to read about Jormungandr because as we know, there is a little bit more of a connection between Atreus and Jormungandr than meets the eye. Um, I also obviously have to read about 
Um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Sorry, looking. Oh, I have a I have a bookmark and I totally didn't even see it. Um, Skull and Hati, the Wolf Giants. I also want to talk about Groa because we do touch on her. Um, she's the one who had been killed because of her prophecies that she came across. So I think what I'll do is I'll do all of the giant stories in a video and Fimble Winter in a video. And then I'm recording this before I saw if you guys want the timeline, but then I'll do the timeline in a video maybe on the 9th before I post my actual first God of War video. I think that's the game plan. I think that's the way we do this. So yeah, we've got lots more stuff to cover. The only other thing I wanna point out that you guys probably won't think is very cool or you noticed already and I just totally went over my head. Um, when I just finished replaying the 2018 God of War, which I just finished a couple days ago, there is a scene where Kratos holds up Atreus's notebook to Brock and Sindri asking them to make um, a keystone or something. I forget what exactly he needs, but it's like plans for a keystone or something. And he holds up a Trace's notebook, which looks exactly like this. This is literally a Trace's notebook in the game. And I totally did not even pick up on that. So that makes us even cooler, even cooler. So yeah, that's just my random little side thought for that. So, okay. We'll start talking about more stories of the giants tomorrow. Um, oh my God, that was my stomach. We'll get into Fimble Winter and the in-between time between 2018 and Ragnarok. And we will do, hopefully, if you guys want to see it, the timeline of all this stuff. Um, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you had some more food for thought for the upcoming game based off of what we read. Um, feel free to share any of your ideas in the comments below. Um, but if you wouldn't mind, if you're talking about Ragnarok specifically or things you've seen in the trailer, if you wouldn't mind putting a spoiler warning first, just so if anybody is scrolling through the comments, they don't see something they don't want to see. Um, I know it seems like I'm being like hyper vigilant about that, but some people really want to go in knowing absolutely nothing about Ragnarok. And I want to make sure that our community is not the reason why they are spoiled for that. So just um, if you could be cautious about that, um, that'd be great. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell button when you do so that you know when I post future videos because we are getting so close. We're getting so close. All right. Have an amazing day, you guys. Thank you so much.